she did that at first, and then she opened it to check it, closed it, and just turned it back on again without putting it back on the air dry. And yeah, and on top of that, she put all the tail, the foot paw, the head, and the body suit inside of the suit. And just to say, I was not upset. <laughs> As you guys can see, we are not friends anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, handlers. What do they do? What are they? What's a the handler? I've been talking about handlers so much this, this, this whole panel. What are handlers? Handler, basically, the handler is the eyes of the fursuiter, and most, most of the time, the hearing and the ears of the fursuiter. The, the handler has a 360 degree eye of vision around that suitor, <laughs> so he can see, he or she can warm like little obstacles like kids, curves, uh, 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 tables, uh, stairs, all that type of stuff. Right? Uh, and, and they do that in or out of the con space. Uh, they also help take photos and hopefully give the camera back. <laughs> <laughs> and just warn people of the do's and don'ts of that suitor, particular suitor. Some handlers, like me, I can handle up to five to six suitors at one time, even though it's not easy. But for somebody that's brand new at it, I wouldn't recommend doing that because it, it's a lot of work. Um, and also, I call handlers first to security because basically that's what they are. Um, and handlers are also a good timekeeper. So, one thing I want to point out for handler sketch, since you're at the end, can you get up for me? Hey, actually, come over here on this side. So, and I'm going to block the projector, so that's fine. A good place to stand when suiting or walk is about right here. Why do you say that? Because as you walk, you're looking, you're looking, you're looking. You can see a danger coming from back. You can see a danger coming from that way. You can see a danger from front, and you can see a danger from the side. So you have pretty much a 360 degree view of vision. And all you got to do, take one step, bam, you can see, you can see in that little blind spot. And then you step right back. Then you can be walking, boom. Nope. Bam. Good. That's all. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. That's the ideal place you want to stand. You never want to stand right here because now you can't see behind you. And if a kid or somebody comes up and tries to, to help the suitor without either of you knowing, his back is not broken. You never want to stand in front of the suitor because now you don't know what's coming up this way, this way, or behind. And that, now it's a bit of disadvantage. When you're doing more than one suitor, I like to kind of stay back farther because now I can see the whole entire row and I can kind of see in between each suitor uh, this way. So if a danger comes up out of anywhere, I can see it and I can be like, hey, hey, you got stairs, 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 three stairs, three stairs. And everybody in that whole line knows there's stairs. And I just stand at the stairs and help them out so they won't fall over and, and look cute. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> um, that's the ideal place you want to kind of stand, <coughs> first years, or first year handling, um, taking pictures, of course, you know, you just want to be out there with a snap, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, thank you. You can go ahead and sit back down. Yay. Woo. <laughs> sit down. And, nope. You still need to tell me that. Right? <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right. All right, now I pretty much explained that first basic detail. Did uh, you try to eat my phone? <laughs> Mike! <laughs> um, basically, you want to have eyes on your person at all times. Now, if you have a fursuiter like I was, and I still do this today even when I'm not in a suit, I bounce all over the freaking place. There's a lot of handlers that can't keep up with me when I'm, in, when I'm in a suit. Because guess what, I might be over here one moment, you look away, I'm way over there. You don't know how I got over there. I don't know where you are, you don't know where I am, and if we're in an unfamiliar place, you're gonna get disoriented quickly. Because you're not really paying attention where you're going, you're just going. Well, at least for me, I'm just going. I expect my handler to, 
to keep track of where we're going and how to get back to the hotel. So I go to, I just go to explore now at this point. What are you doing, colors? <laughs> um, I mean, that's not mean much. Also, know your student. Don't just go and just handle a random first student and don't ask questions before you do so because you might let somebody do something that that particular student did not like and then now they're upset with you because you're their handler and you didn't tell them not to hug them or not to pull their tail or something like that. So I always ask questions. I always ask questions uh, before you go out and start suiting, especially if it's a new uh, suitor for you. Do's and don'ts when it comes to handling a person. I mean, it's not really much. Do's, of course, like I just said, keep your eyes on the first year at all, pretty much at all times. You know, take pictures and give the camera back <laughs> to the person that actually take the picture. And don't be like Leafwood that would try to eat the camera and run away. <laughs> you know you do that. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not really much do's. Don't. Don't let anybody do anything to the suitor that um, that you know the suitor don't like. Try to keep the suitor out of danger. Well, keep the suitor out of danger. Because if you see that drop a staircase, you gotta let them know, hey, there's 14 steps, and don't tell them out there like right at the steps. Because <laughs> next step they take. <laughs> okay, I've seen I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. First suit maintenance. Clean your suit, please, please, oh my God, please. <laughs> Clean your suit, okay? Washing your suit. Remember the story I said earlier about how my friend put, her, put my suit in the dryer? Don't do that. Uh, what you can put in your washer? You can put your hand balls, depending. Depending on if you have like resin uh, hand balls, then it maybe might not be the best idea, but if you have like, you see, like these type of hand palms, then on a delicate cycle, yes, that'd be fine. But you kind of want to keep track of what's going on because you might want to take your hand palms out a little earlier, so the spin dial won't mess up and tear holes in your in your hand palms. Uh, right, in the washer. You want to turn everything, your bodysuit, if you can, your hand palms, inside out. Why? Because the spin, the spin dial will still rip holes in your fur suit if it catches your fur. And because, especially on that like last section where it just spins quickly, you want to make sure that your fur don't get caught on that spin dial because that spin dial is not going to stop for your fur suit. This is going to keep going and it's going to rip a hole in your fur suit. Again, I've had that happen. Um, if you're washing a normal cycle, like I said before, a spin dial can pair up, throw holes in your suit. Honestly, personally, I feel you should wash your first suit on a delicate cycle. I do. I used to do it all the time. Delicate cycle, I always, that's how I always wash my suit. Um, drying options. Again, do not put your suit in a normal old school dryer. <laughs> do not take the, uh, not take the, do not take it to the dry cleaners. They do not know how to handle first suits. No, first suits. First suits. First suits. And also, they will give you a funny outlook. I, again, I, I have that happen. I, just did, I was like, never mind. Somebody called me on that. Um, if you have one of the new dryers, uh, put it, you must put it on a no heat tumble dry on delicate cycle. Again, no heat tumble dry on delicate. Because again, you will have this thing like me, where I spent $3,000 on a suit. To for it to get ruined. You will not be happy. You might just lose the bet. One of your best friends you might have for years. I do. Um, as I said, the heat melts the fur. Even the smallest amount of heat will destroy your suit. The smallest, smallest amount will destroy you. Will just flat out destroy it. Any heat will destroy it. Even when you blow dry it and use like a little blow dryer, you want to hold on to the cool button and, and like blow dry your suit because even that can destroy your destroy a piece of your suit, especially if you're not paying attention and you're just like brushing and doing that at the same time. You might be you might be just matting out the whole entire suit and then when you're done, you got this big old not, it's not even a fluff ball anymore. It's just this. 
I don't even know what to call it. It's just this. That's, mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all I call it. All right. I would say hang dryer suit is like the best option. But again, if you put it on the no heat, tumble dry on delicates, it'll be fine too. Uh, drying and cleaning option, continue. Uh, Febreze is not a wash. Let me say that one more time. A Febreze, hallelujah, is not a wash, hallelujah. It's a temporary smell deterrent during a con. I don't trust hotels, uh, hotel uh, washers and dryers. I don't at all. So I never put my, I, ne I never ever put a suit inside of the washer and dryer at a hotel. Never. I always did that in the comfort of my home because I know my washer, I know my dryer, I paid a lot of money for them, so I like, I, I like my dryer and washer. So yes, Febreze or like alcohol or something like that is perfect, yeah? suit air out before you start suiting again. It's always the best idea to let your suit air out before you do anything. I know somebody that puts like rubbing alcohol with like uh, vanilla flavoring, I guess I think it is, <laughs> and it sprays it on a suit and lets it air out. It smells like vanilla all the fucking time. I love hugging after that suit because it's just like, <sighs> now I want some ice cream. Dang. Um, and I'm not going to ice cream stores because I'm working. Uh, Okay, see, Lysol is harsh on your skin even when you're, even when you're just spraying in the air. So I personally wouldn't use Lysol. I mean, if you use Lysol, you better let that thing dry for the rest of the day. And you better suit again the next day. Because you put it on, you'll start sweating, it's going to start getting onto your skin, and you know, and you'll come off, you're going to have rashes all over your, all over the place. <coughs> so I would say if you're going to suit like once that day, suit. And, and if you want to use Lysol, I don't recommend it. Uh, I spray it, I spray it very lightly, and then just let it air dry in front of the fan or something. Yeah. I think she has a some sort of synthetic. Uh, so she, I remember she, tell, I remember him. I remember he was telling me that it really, you're really not supposed to really eat it. It's just really for the smell. Because um, he wants his food to suit the smell like a certain. He'll change it up so every once in a while, so he might have vanilla, and the next thing you know, he might be coming out smelling like roses and, and red velvet. That his particular way of doing it, because he had a particular way of doing it yeah. that made it that made the that maybe I'm not sure. I, I think I said completely, I completely forget. I just I just remember him smelling like roses, vanilla, <laughs> and red velvet. And every time I smell it, I always want what that smells like. So yeah. Um, oh, uh, for a temporary like spa cleaner, especially for white suits. Spa shot and a, red, and a white rag does wonders. Especially on a white suit. It works better on a white suit than it does a color suit. Uh, if you have like a color, I would try to find a rag that matches the color that you're, that you're trying to get a spot off of. Uh, only because it, the white might, it might turn the suit a whole different color, the rag. So I would say mainly use spa shot on a white, on a white, on a white part of your suit. Like, 
the tail or like the back of the head off of Lisa or like the, bo the body on, on her and her paw. Um, I did that because my whole suit right here was all white and it stopped like right here. So I, I, have, I always carry some sort of spot shot with me. Normally I, I normally do today, these days only when I'm handling a suitor that has majority white on them, like Lisa. It's majority white. If I was handling her, I, I would go out and buy some spot shot and, and have a, right, a white rag with me in my little fanny pack on me. Um, like I said before, I used, sometimes used to use the hair dryer. I always have the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the cool button push. Uh, it helps, it helps uh, oops, the fur out a little bit. Um, watered down alcohol, and like I said, oh yeah, it was watered down alcohol with uh, mixed with vanilla was basically his solution. I don't remember how, how, how actually it went, but watered down alcohol with vanilla was, was the mix. Um, I do uh, items to wear when you're in suit. Okay? A bottle of flour. You might see a lot of people wearing this uh, while you're in my room with them. It's the best thing to have because it it's pretty much soaks up the sweat and you don't really sweat onto the fabric of your first suit. Because you got to remember, it's just you, the fabric, then the fur. And it's easy to clean if you don't have so much sweat on the actual fabric. And it takes less time for the for whatever solution you're using to do to do its work because you have um, because you don't have all that sweat and gunk and all that stuff. Yeah. Great recommendation. I've always been told to use the first underarm and get heat here. I'm going yeah. My mother. That's the name. Uh, basically, monopoga is a close uh, fitting garment that covers the whole head from the neck all the way up to the top, but it keeps this part open so you can see through. Uh, sometimes it might keep this part open, but most of the time you see it like to the nose and up above the eyebrow. So it's like most of the time. And it's made of it, so it's pretty good. Sweat resistant, combat gear, or under armor. Okay, combat gear, I, I hear nowadays are a whole lot cheaper than under armor. Back in when I was suiting, under Armour was the thing to get, and the thing that you that you want is something that that keeps sweat in and does not expel. Because like I said before, you gotta remember it's you, the fabric, then the then the fur, then the actual fur. And you don't want to be that person that's running around in suit, and then somebody does like one of these numbers on your, like your shoulder, and your whole entire suit is pretty much filled in sweat. Not the best idea. But that's why I say Under Armour. Uh, but from what I'm hearing now, combat gear, I guess, is the thing to get. Uh, and make sure it, it keeps sweat on you, on the body, and not expels it outside of the actual Under Armour or combat gear. All right? Um, and then also, sweat resistant combat and Under Armour pants. Long, preferably long pants. Only because, again, you're sweating. You're running around, having fun, fursuiting, being cute. And then now you get back up to your room, take your whole entire suit off, and you find out up here is dry, but down here is completely wet. Again, you started sweating again. Now you gotta now you gotta put more work into cleaning your suit than you really should. Then you really have to, honestly. Um, so I just say before you start heading out there and getting getting gear and start going out, get the proper materials first before you start doing all that, because then you're gonna have a whole lot harder time cleaning and maintaining the suit than even the suiting. All right. That's pretty much it for the panel. I mean, if you have any other questions in the talk back section, she has something. Oh, I forgot that. So you might see a lot of suitors, and I, I know it says talk back, but I'm gonna go through this. You might see a lot of suitors. I'm gonna take this off. That has one of these on on them. This just doesn't mean, or yeah, one of these. Anything that looks like a sign. It's not art. This is not this. This is an actual art piece that I got commissioned. These are actual warnings of do nots and awareness of what stuff is. 
she is not she's this is not on her because she's in a suit and she's half blind her character is actually half blind so it's a warning that she may see you but she's not going to recognize she's not going to acknowledge you because oh, her no, suit no. the sign is supposed to say that because i'm physically half blind oh yeah dude, true, so true, true, true. You, you, you're thinking, uh, yeah yeah go ahead so my sign is to warn people that I cannot see them 